We live in a time where masculinity is shamed and men don't know what it means to be a man. As a pastor and counselor, I've spent the better part of my life equipping and training others. My goal with this show is to translate my hard-earned experience into tools and tactics to help you become stronger as a man. This is the Brave Co. Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Bellot. Guys, welcome to the Brave Co. Podcast. Today, I'm here with my good friend and a guy that I really admire and look up to, Jeremy Affelt. Uh, Jeremy is a three-time World Series champion. He's a left-handed pitcher, um, which makes him pretty unique, but also an incredible dad, which I think is uh, probably the reason why I'm so drawn to him. I'm, I'm, I find myself most drawn to who a guy is uh, outside of his professional world. And so Jeremy's an incredible dad. Uh, Jeremy, you have three boys. Is that correct? Yeah, I've got three boys. I, uh, yeah. um, I've got a, a 14 gonna be 15, six <laughs> foot five, two twenty five. Holy smokes. He dude. is a toad, uh, football, <laughs> football and basketball player uh, okay. works out with me. Uh, about to be stronger than me. I don't tell him that, but uh, yeah, for real. Strong. He just turned 14 in September or in August, August 28th. So really, yeah. yeah. So he's a big kid. I have an 11 year old. It's going to be 12 in September, and I got a nine year old. It's going to be 10. They're, my oldest and youngest are born on the same day. So uh, wow, no way. Yeah. So I'll be 15, 12, and 10 here, and uh, they are all boy. And my hunting bill is uh, <laughs> my hunting bill gets up there. Bro, uh, we have a good no time. Doubt. And then also, um, we'll talk about this in a little while, but uh, you just opened up your brewery, which is uh, Free Roam Brewing Company. So yeah. um, I'm pretty stoked to go down to Texas and <clears throat> hang out and in, in, uh, in your brewery with you. Yeah. Check it out. You're actually um, podcasting from there right now. So yeah, I am in my podcast studio and I look out oh. at my brewery and check it all out. It's pretty fun. So cool. Yeah. I love it, man. Well, hey, while we're getting started, would you just tell us a little bit about where you grew up and um, yeah, what what was life like for Jeremy Felt? Yeah, I grew up as a military brat. Uh, my dad was in the Air Force. So we kind of grew up while he was a bombardier for B-52, uh, so radar navigator. So he kind of bounced around everywhere uh, and uh, spent uh, a lot of my time in Washington State. And when my dad was stationed at Fairchild, he lives up there again. After, after he retired, he moved us back there. But um, we went to Guam. So I lived overseas for a while. Wow. How long? A little island, about 30 miles long, 10 miles wide, super tiny island. How long uh, did you live there? Lines. I lived there for th my second, third, and fourth grade years. Uh, wow. That's cool. I uh, developed a mental fear of sharks during that time and, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, had a hammerhead shark fly over the flip over the reef at the base uh, beach there and almost got me at a surfer no. uh, a guy come and try to grab me. So I've, I've learned to scuba dive since because I've taken on that challenge to conquer my fears. Yeah, so I scuba dive on, and I purposely try to find sharks now. Come uh, on. But I, I got to spend some time over there, see the Orient. Amazing times, got to see amazing things. Um, yeah. And then my dad was in Castle Air Force Base, which is in Merced, California, just about two, what, three hours? Yeah, what, not, two, three hours not south far from where I'm at. Yeah. So uh, spent some time there. Uh, grew up a Giants and an A's fan. So that was pretty cool. And I got to play for the Giants. Uh, but um, then I moved, my dad retired and uh, moved me back up to Spokane, Washington. Like I said, they still live there. My sister still lives there. I uh, went to high school there. Um, then were, your parents, were your parents married? Or divorced? Uh, they're married uh, yeah. still. It, oh, man. I think we're looking at 40, 44 years. I think going on 40, 43, 44 years married. Oh, that is so awesome. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I have a sister, older <laughs> sister, two years older than me, uh, who are their pastors of a church in Spokane. Okay, that's cool. Now, were you growing up, was becoming a baseball player, a pro baseball player, was that always in your sights? Uh, you know, it was crazy to believe, you know, a lot of, a lot of kids, they, I mean, I guess a lot of yeah. kids are like, I want to be yeah. a professional baseball player. You know, my dad was, uh, my dad and I were at the Oakland A's Coliseum, uh, when I was 12 and it, we went a lot, we went to a lot of those games, but we went to the, we went to this game for some reason. And I remember he got me, he usually got me the nosebleed seats up in the top of Oakland. And that was yeah. when they had the upper <laughs> tank open, like Bro, they don't have it I, open now. I remember so, those days. I didn't go a lot, but when I was young, um, probably 12 years old, my dad took me 
to Oakland Stadium. The A's was my, A's were my team, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Jose Canseco, Ricky Henderson. Yeah, yeah, and they were massive. Now we McGuire. know why. You know, there's yeah. other reasons yeah. why they were so big. <laughs> Bro. Yeah, <laughs> we do know massive why. Massive human beings. Uh, but uh, uh, but I will say this. You know, I remember sitting there and I remember seeing all those guys. Dave Stewart was pitching that day. That was my favorite pitcher. Yeah. Uh, and I watched him. I think McGuire hit a couple homers that game. I was just so in awe. And I looked at my dad and I said, Dad, one day I'm going to play here. Wow. He just patted me on the head. He's like, go get him, kid. I never went to a camp. I just... <laughs> <laughs> I just played a lot. And then I remember I was 20, uh, 22 years of age. Uh, I had the, I walked into the Oakland Coliseum through center field. That's where the bus drops you off. And wow. I was walking in with the Royals and I had my Nokia phone, you know, the one with like the worm game on it. Yes, you know? dude. I yes. That, that's the phone I had and uh, uh, called him and I said, dad, Hey, you know where I'm at today? He's like, yeah, you're in Oakland. I'm like, yeah, dad, do you not remember what happened here? He's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> my dad, I see the very seats we were sitting in when I said today, I want to play here one day. And tonight I pitch. He hung up the wow. phone. On me. And I was like, so I called my mom back. They don't even have cell phones. They have like still got the like phone on the yeah. wall. You know? yeah. And uh, I call him back and I, I go, mama, like what happened? He's like, your dad's crying. He just says, I want you to hear him. You know, so it was <laughs> such a big deal for him to like actually the reality of that. It just yeah. sits in when a son says, dad, I want to yeah. dream. Right. And he never stopped me from dreaming. I will say that. Right. Like, but I think for a dad to like not stop you, but not necessarily like, eh, you know, but then, then when you yeah. actually do it and I didn't get that until I had sons and now I'm like, right. I'm going to cry like a baby. If they ever say one day I'm going to do this and they actually do it. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to cry like a baby, you know, it, Bro, it was it, pretty crazy. It's a little tough being a dad sometimes because your kids, like in telling your kids that they can dream, of course, because they come up with some crazy dreams. My son is uh, Elijah. He's 22 now, but when he was young, he's just the kind of guy that, that goes after life like fully. So I remember him saying to me one day, I was, uh, I was down doing the laundry and he comes and he goes, dad, dad, I need an agent. And I said, what, what do you mean you need an agent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, oh, I need an agent because I want to become an actor. And Kyle, which Kyle was my roommate, said that I just need an agent and then I can become an actor. And I was like, oh, why don't you go ask Kyle if he can help you get an agent then? <laughs> and then, you know, the week yeah, after yeah. he would tell me, dad, I want to, I want to start a go-kart store. It was never like, he didn't have like, there wasn't no small practical thing. Like he wanted to start to sell parts for go-karts. Yeah. And he's like, Kyle said that all I have to do is get a business license and anyone can get that. And then we could, we could start our business. That's all and you got to do. That's it's all you got to do. <laughs> you know, and he wanted to write a books like Papa wrote a yeah. book because yeah, writing yeah. books. Is, yeah. So yeah. Um, I could imagine your dad was probably in the same boat of Jeremy finding different dreams every week that he wanted yeah, to because he, he also knew baseball. Like he, I didn't go to baseball yeah. camps. I, I mean, yeah. I, I didn't, I just played ball in my backyard and in little league, you know, it wasn't like so, there was any kind of select thing going on, bro. How do you make it to the pros if you don't like, how, yeah. How do you make it to the pros without going to camps and you doing know, all that stuff? Nowadays, I don't know. Uh, yeah. The game's pretty advanced and I'm yeah. down here in Texas where, oh my gosh, 30,000 at a high school football game, the whole town shuts down. Like, wow. Their life depends on a 16 year old boy catching a touchdown, you know, like Bro, their bank. Their identity on yeah. So it's nuts, but, yeah. and there's a lot of sports going on down here. A lot of individual training. Yeah. You know, I just played a lot. You know, I, we didn't have cell phones. We didn't have, yeah. you know, social media we didn't have yeah. we didn't have gaming we, we weren't watching youtubers make 20 no. million dollars a year playing no. video games you know we didn't see no. any of that so no our only dreams are like get outside and figure it out you know and, and, and that's what i did uh played you know i throw a ball off a wall i pick a spot i take a chalk and i put an x on a little cement and i try to hit that as many times as i could i had no idea that that was training myself to be accurate i was just competitive wow. So I wow. want to say, I'm going to see how many times out of 15 I can hit it. And then I'd start over again and try to beat it. You know, wow. like it was just natural. It probably God 
if you think about it now, it's probably birthed by God in the sense yeah. of like, you yeah. have no idea why I'm asking you to do this, but trust me, yeah. you need to do it. Like I, I get yeah. that now, but as a kid, you were just like, I don't know. I'm just competitive. I just, you know, want to yeah. try to do it. You know, uh, that's all I did. And when I signed at a high school, uh, I went to pro ball and found out everybody was better than me. And I was the best person that I, wow. in, in my city. Uh, so, but what you had to do is learn to fail. You know, you had to learn to, um, understand Dang. that failure is not a real word. It's a poor, it's a poorly executed, uh, you know, verbiage in our, in our culture, yeah. uh, the whole fail, the word failure. I tell my boys, there's no such thing as failure. It's called teachable mm. moments. If, if y- you don't fail, you learn. And when you yeah. succeed, you ride the wave as long as you can. Right. Until you get knocked on your butt and then you got to figure <laughs> out why you knocked on your butt. Right. So, yeah. So, uh, you know, I had to learn that concept because I had never failed. High school was not, I never wow. failed high school. So it's in you know, baseball wise, you know, so I had to learn to do that. Uh, I also learned about what it meant to, to believe in a sovereign God in the sense of baseball showed me I was struggling wow. so bad one time, uh, just struggling baseball. I mean, I think I th- probably saw the record. I gave like 15 hits and in five innings in a ball. I mean, I th- oh, wow. think that's a high, uh, you know, Carolina <laughs> League record, by the way, <laughs> but and I'm 42. I was 18 when I set that record. So yeah. 19 or whatever. And, uh, and, and I will say this, I had a pastor come up to me. Uh, Al egg was his name. He's out of what you say back then. I was, okay, uh, but I was kind of in that, in that boat of, yeah, I went to church cause my parents went to church. Right. Now I'm on my own. Yeah. How do I decide whether God's real? And it's up to me. Right. Yeah. That's where I was at. And <laughs> he handed me a picture. I was telling him about my struggles and I was boohooing myself. And yeah. And he handed me a picture of a tandem bicycle. And oh. I'm like, what is that? He's like, put it in your Bible. I'm like, why? He's like, anytime you start to get frustrated or want to give up, you have to ask yourself, which seat is God on? Ah, dude. And he goes, you, both people have to pedal on a tandem bicycle. Yeah. You got to crank it out. You don't make stuck. one person, pe- but only one person steers, man. And God's yeah. not asking you to steer. He's asking you to pedal. So you keep working as hard as you can. Get to the Bro. field early today. Crank it out. Focus on what you do. Go out there. Give it your best shot. Let the man steer. And man, when I did that. That's good career, advice, bro. My, my career went way different. I, next, I went from struggling a ball to being in double A the next year, making two all-star teams. Wow. Didn't get called up like I, sh- I was supposed to get called. I was supposed to skip, tri- skip AAA and get called to the big leagues that year. Didn't. Got frustrated and then remembered that because I always carried that in my Bible. Wow. And I remembered, okay, I'm going to pedal. And then the next year I walk into the spring training, I make the big league team, skip AAA, and I never looked back. I spent 14 years in the big leagues. Like It was just that thing for me that I always thought about, even at the big league level. When I'm wanting to get selfish and take over, I got to ask who's riding, who, who's steering the tandem bicycle. And, and uh, that, that's where I learned all that. And that's the sovereign God. That's, that would be when I tell people, they say, what do you mean God knows all and sees all? So you can just sit there and not do anything. Yeah. And my best yeah. way to describe how a sovereign God works is a tandem bicycle. You know, wow. you still got to work. It's just one person. Right. You know, and, Bro, uh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's been good. What an incredible lesson uh, for this young kid who comes out of high school, kicks butt in high school gets into, you know, minor league baseball and it's inevitable, right? Like every single person is going to see adversity. Every person, every person's going to see challenges in life. Every person's going to have their story of their hard time. Just not very many people actually use that to propel them into, into the rest of their life, which is again, full of challenges and adversity. And And success in life, success in baseball is being able to operate in adversity. That's right. I I mean, that to me, like I was never a super, uh, um, super good baseball player, but you just, it's just like any other sport. It's like any other thing in life, right? Is whoever can operate the best in adversity and perform in adversity wins. Yeah. And, and for me, that is, you're exactly right. It, some people say this is a Debbie Downer, but it's not. It's it's not whoever succeeds most wins. It's whoever fails yeah. the least. And, and, and people <laughs> would say, well, that's not a positive thing. And <laughs> in some ways, Bill Johnson might want to correct me on that. But but I would say that 
to be honest with you, with baseball, like you you you, you fail seventy percent of the time, you're in the Hall of Fame. There oh, is not another job out there baseball. like that. Yeah, yes. like it's whoever fails least. And what it means for me is whoever understands how to weather the storms the best Bro. will come out on top because you're gonna face the storms are inevitable. They are going to hit. It's gonna happen. God never. You know, I think a lot of people, you know, think that when they find God, that means he, that their life's going to be on easy street and they yeah. reject God right after when they find right. out that it's not easy. It's oh. actually it can tend to be harder, right? Because they don't understand trials and tribulations that they're supposed to take joy in and and it, which is a very hard concept to grasp until you understand what like for me, that's what my my brewery is a buffalo. I mean, you see a hop head here. I got buffalo tattoos like I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, it's a buffalo mentality. It's exactly that, man. I mean, I'm you, you do a lot of hunting like I do. Yeah. Uh, I hunt those things, but yeah. I also take pictures. Yeah. I stare at them. I gaze at them. I watch it's them. Respect, man. The whole animal is amazing. Yeah, and how they're used, how even when they're harvested, every piece of their body is for something. And I mean, you talk yeah. to the, you know, you talk to the American Indian. It's it's every single yeah. part of that animal was used for survival, right? And yeah. so it was an amazing beast, but it's how they handle storms. They, they charge them. They take them straight on. They walk at them. When they see a storm, storm coming east, they walk west. They don't go east with it. That's, that's you know, that's, you know, cows. Cows yeah. do that, you know? Right. And, and they so die. for me, they die. They get scattered. They get lost. They get sick. All those things where if you look at a buffalo, they just like, nah, we're going to take this head on. I got a big head and a big, huge hump on my back. Yeah. It allows me to push through, push through the storms, push through, plow right through the blizzard, right through the snow and, and make a path. And I'm writing a book on that right now. I'm writing a wow. book on, on the buffalo and using my story on what it means. And I was just editing a chapter today. Yeah. Uh, in that book and that chapter is basically not only do they plow through snow to make a path and yeah. also they actually push through it to where they uh can they they push so much snow out of the way that vegetation pops up so their herd oh, wow. will graze behind them as they walk to feed like wow. it's crazy what they can do you know so i'm i'm uh I, I i very much think that that's a lot of what baseball taught me uh, in, in, in life. And for me, I, you know, I'm sure we'll get into my gauntlet here in a minute that I just walked through that actually <laughs> yeah. is the whole reason why I, I yeah. think baseball, even, even I was there for it. People say, well, why'd you play baseball? Yeah. yeah. You, sometimes you don't know until, until yeah. what I just walked through and that's, it, it prepared me for my storm. So, which is, is a great segue because I mean, the real game of life for you, baseball was the warm up. And baseball was that really was your warm up. It was your, um, it was the reps. Get get real reps in because you're about to get dropped into a storm like no other. And I walked with you th through some of that storm, and you have yeah. some really in incredible people in your life. But um, and, and I ultimately I've been through the same storm that you have. But you ended up um, going through a divorce, and. <clears throat> Can you tell us just a little bit, you don't have to go into details, but tell us a little right. bit about, you know, the, the storm that you were in and, and yeah, we'll unpack it a little bit. Yeah. You know, I think, uh, one of those things growing up, you know, I'm, I'm a very, uh, loyal person. I don't, I don't believe in divorce. I still don't, yeah. I'm divorced and I don't believe in divorce. Right. <laughs> Me uh, too. Hey, so it's nuts, but you know, I, I, I think there are some storms that come at you that you bring upon yourself and there's others yeah. that, 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 that hit you. Uh, that you yep. didn't ask for. And this it's is true. one of them. I didn't ask for it. Uh, I was yep. married for 22 years, uh, married to a girl that I knew since I was 14. Yeah. Um, three, three boys, three wonderful, beautiful, amazing boys came from, yeah. from that marriage. Uh, but it ended and it was a gut punch to me. I mean, it yeah. brought me to my knees. I uh, <laughs> thought my life was over. Uh, and it was to a point where my faith was even challenged. Like, yeah. man, I, I, I tried. I wasn't perfect. Real. In reality, yeah. no matter what, we can blame the other person. Yeah. Um, and, and I would say that this was not my call. However, 
I'm not going to say that the call was made because of some scenarios that were out of my control, but yeah, it takes two to tango in some way, it shape does. or form. Yeah, and it's so true. you can't always say it's one sided. Yeah. I was right. married when I was 20 years old. I did not know what it meant to be married. I didn't right. even know who I was. And yeah. so a lot of wounds and damage took place over yeah. probably relational things that just was for, came from immaturity and came to fruition and came to head, uh, yeah. you know, after, after baseball was over, which, you know, the, unfortunately I, I used to brag about how I'd never be that person. And that's where you get humbled a little bit, uh, yeah. you know, 84% of us roughly, sometimes they, some people say 80, some people say 84, but uh, baseball players get divorced after they retire. Wow. No it, way. It is, it's a high statistic. Wow. Uh, I, I didn't know that. Yeah. Because, you know, we're gone every two weeks. We come down yep. 10 days. Not a lot of stuff goes wrong. By the time, you know, you leave for 10 days or 12 days, you come home, there's a honeymoon period a little bit. Yep. Stuff starts a little friction. And before it gives head, boom, boom you're gone. You're gone again. Right. And so yeah. like, you're kind of back and forth, back and forth. And then, uh, you know, it, but then the off seasons are tough for a lot of guys and yeah. we'll all admit it. Like, a lot of friction in the marriage in the off season because yeah. it does rear its head. Right. It, it, and then there is no two week road trip. There is no, no, I got to yeah. go to the ballpark. There's nothing. Right. And, but then spring training hits and you kind of, uh, and then the season hits and it gets under the rug. Dude, right? And by the time you actually are present in your marriage, when your career is over, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's too late. Sometimes it's it's it is. Sometimes yeah. it is. It is too yeah. late. Uh, and like I said, I, I didn't ask for this. I didn't want it. Yeah. Uh, and, and so it was more of me having just to deal with the hand that was dealt to me. Yeah. Uh, and I, I went through a lot of therapy, um, and I, I was holding a Bible study in, in my brewery. I hold a Bible study in my brewery on Monday mornings. That's uh, awesome. We're actually dealing, believe it or not with a study. I'll, I'll give this to you after the podcast. I think you'd be interested yeah, in cool. with, with what you're doing at brave at, at brave co. But, um, you know, the, the books called charge the storm. And I didn't know awesome. anything about it. My buddy said he had a friend. He went on a mountain retreat men's thing, and he wrote yeah. a whole seven week study on the Buffalo mentality. Wow. It was nuts. And we talked about something the other day, Jay, that was really important to me. Yeah. Uh, and I think that it, it would make a lot of sense. You have to go through it to understand it, but it yeah. is a lot of sense. And one one of my one of the one of the guys in the group says, you know, when you when you're in a storm and you're in that poor me mentality, which we all will go through. Yeah. And sometimes it's needed. I mean, yep. hey, man, we get divorced. You're bitter. You're angry. You got you got yeah. more stuff. But when you get healthy, when you actually can get healthy, is when you stop being the poor me because poor me is selfish. It yes. is a selfish mentality where you take your eyes off God and you say, "What about me? Why me? Yep. Uh, this isn't my fault. Yep. You know, I didn't deserve this." And you're super selfish and you cannot get healthy when you're selfish. Yeah. And thank God we have a really patient God, right? Like yeah, where he's like, it's okay, so true. Throw your temper tantrum, dude. <laughs> and then you're going to put your eyes back on me and I'm going to smile and I'm going to say, you're right on time. I got you. It's not the yeah. end of the world. Right. You might have either made a mistake to bring this storm on you, but we're going to get through it or it came on you and it's not your fault, but we're still going to get through it. And I'm going to wake up from my nap and I'm going to calm the storm and I'm going to ask yeah. you to walk on water and I'm going to ask you to keep your eyes on me and we're going to keep moving. And when he said that, like the selfish, I was like, man, I was thinking about it, Jay. I was like, Bro, dude, true. my, I tried to, I tried to weather a storm for, for almost a year when the final scenario happened where it was just yeah. like, we got to get divorced. And yeah. my therapist had to stop helping me. And mm. what she left me was because when you go through divorce therapy, therapists can't help you anymore because of the whole court stuff. Right. So, right. so I had to take a pause, but it was the coolest thing because I remembered what she said to me in my last session. She goes, I, I'm going to have to take a break. But remember these things and carry it with you. And it was a two year divorce. Jay. It wasn't like a six month deal. It was bro. Nasty. Now you, you, uh, that was a long, that was a marathon, bro. Oh, and unfortunately, and I had to, I had to weather that. And, but you know what, when I actually got healthy, became a better father. Yeah. Reunited with my family. My side of the family never really connected with me throughout our, my, my marriage. It was a, just a situation that they weren't valued. Yeah. And, and my sister, I didn't have a good, I didn't, even, it's not that I had a bad relationship. I just didn't 
I, I, I didn't get yep. to spend time with him when I was married. And I will say this. I, when I got quit being selfish and I finally let it go and said, okay, I mourn the death of the marriage. Yeah. Mourn the divorce process. I have to work through the divorce, but what, who am I? Yeah. What, what makes me, me? And I had to look to God. And the second I looked to God for everything, I became a better dad. I became a better son. I became a better brother, a better uncle. Right. I, I literally said, it's not about me. It's about protecting my boys uh, yeah. from, from being hurt by this as best as I possibly can. Yeah. And I also had to say my biggest thing, Jay, was I had to actually look and say, okay, who am I? What are my boundaries? Yeah. Who do I need to become so yeah. that in my next relationship, I'm the very best version of me for my next wife. Bro, that's what it's about. And that was true. Super important for me. You're dropping so many, so many bombs here. I want to, I want to touch on a, a bunch of them. I'm just taking notes. So I don't forget. Um, <clears throat> I want to go back just a little bit because the, there, there's so many different scenarios that we're going to go through in life. Like you're talking about, we're going to go through seasons where stuff is our fault and, and that's fine. And we're going to go through stuff through life where it, life just happens to us. Uh, you find yourself in the middle of a fire and gosh, you didn't start it, but, <clears throat> and I think so many people get stuck there, get really, really stuck in the victim mentality. Yep. Good point. And I'll tell you, uh, here's what I've said to a lot of people <clears throat> recently is where you're at in life is probably not your fault. It's probably not your fault. Now, yeah, follow me. Great point. Let me let me finish it. Yeah. Like when so much of who people are today has been built, was handed to them from their childhood, right? If your parents cared for you, if they didn't care for you, if they spent time pouring into you, if they poured good identity, I mean, so much trauma and pain and rejection is is already been handed to kids. By the time they even realize they're alive, 12, 13, 14, mm -hmm. 15, who they become was literally created for them and because of the home environment that they grew up in. And then they have a whole bunch of shame, right? They become adults. They have a whole bunch of shame over the decisions that they've made and the decisions that they're making. Even, bro, even things that they crave eating. Like if your parents feed you sugar, crap, I mean, that's like, you don't have the money to go buy groceries. You don't have the money. You don't have like, it's not your responsibility to cook when you're young. Right. So yeah. you get brought up and nurtured into this life. And then they feel so much shame over why does my life suck so bad? Mm. Mm. Why is it? And they get stuck there. They get stuck in one, this is all my fault. And then two, as they get older, they go, no, this is all their fault. But the problem with the victim is the, you you want to spend as little time as possible being a victim. Mm. If there's a way to make it your responsibility, that's the best possible thing that you can do, right? So it's not your fault where you're at, probably. It's your responsibility, which mm. is what I've been telling people a lot lately. Is this is not your kids. The divorce, bro, wasn't your kids. It wasn't their fault. Mm. But if they're going to move beyond that in life, if they're going to, they have pain in their life. Now that pain, at some point, it will be their responsibility. Right now, it's as a dad, it's your responsibility to help them work right. through that. Right. But right. eventually it becomes their responsibility. And I think so much, it's like, it's like you, you know, you find the, the place that you can own in your marriage, which is the same thing that happened to me. Um, and I, I won't go into all that because I've already explained mine, but I find myself in the middle of this. Oh my gosh. It feels like my world's burning down. I've done all I can to save it. Can no longer save it. Okay. It's time for me to take ownership of my life over this storm in as quickly as possible. Get out of the victim mentality. Oh, yep. why am I here? How long am I going to stay here? My life would be so much better if, oh, this guy over here is not dealing with that. Oh, he's got so much more money. He can hire his well, uh, you know, if I was Jeremy, I, I would, uh, my divorce would have ended sooner because he's got the money to get a therapist. I didn't have money to get a therapist, you know, yeah. all those things yeah. that we do, yeah. right. It'd be so much easier because, 
And the truth is, is, is that's all BS. All of it, a hundred percent of it is you putting more bars into that prison mm. and the key is you're putting them there. And so <clears throat> I, I always feel like it's so important as an adult, like one of my main things right now for people is you got to take ownership. You got to take, you got to take ownership of your life. And like the Buffalo, if the storm is going one way, don't go the other way. That's right. James one, right? Consider it pure joy when you encounter various trials for the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And when perseverance runs its course, you will lack nothing. It literally says, if you run from the storm, you don't get what you need in life. Mm. Mm. You end up broken. And bro, I want to commend you. Uh, I really do. I want to commend you for walking through that. And I'm not just saying that because the the proof's in the pudding, bro. When you, because you pushed in, your kids are better. You're better. And I'm not just talking emotionally. I'm saying you're a better man than before yeah. it happened. Agreed. Your kids will be more resilient. They'll bounce back and they'll come back stronger. And your family is going to be stronger and your future will be brighter and stronger. And I saw that in my life. That's what my dad, my dad was doing the same thing uh, to me that, 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 um, that that pastor did to you is my dad kept going, son, you don't get to make all the decisions in your life on what happens to you. You just get to decide what you're going to do. Mm. And he continually called me up to the highest level, the highest bar of living, which is ownership in deciding every day. What are you going to do? What decisions are you going to make? And uh, man, I can remember I had some real self-pity days. <laughs> yeah. Bro, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Some self-pity uh, world records probably. Uh, for the most piteous day, yeah. a lot. My birthday was was one of them. You know, I found out I found out all the details on my birthday, which is just like, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, the worst. Know, massive. This is the this is my day. So, and uh, <laughs> bro, it's so good to have other men, right, who have weathered life. Yeah, who can look at you and go, oh no, this is bro, this is. This right here is your initiation into yeah. a great life, into resilience, into perseverance. And um, so I just wanted to stop and really commend you. But also for people that are out there, you know, we're not going to get to some place. And, and I was talking to a friend the other day. Um, we're, we're not going to arrive somewhere that is free of like, we're not we're not working on this life and somehow some way Jeremy's going to get to a place in life where he no longer has pressure, where yeah, right. he no longer has some stress, where he no longer has pain, where like, that's not happening. You're only going to get to a place where you're strong enough that you don't really care. That's right. You're kind of look forward to it. It's like working out or it's like a hard baseball game. You're like, if you went into every game, and you just blew it out. It wouldn't even be fun anymore. That's right. No, you're right. Yeah, and, and that's the thing is, and that's what I was saying. Like baseball, like you said, uh, it initiated me into my actual storm. I think it's just yeah. It it was almost like a young bull that was like, hey, you just stay behind me for a little bit because yeah. eventually you're gonna have to take on your own herd and you're yeah have to get them through it and. You know, I, I, I looked at it as, you know, when, when I was going through this, so I did this thing called the trauma egg and it was intense, yeah. man. So my therapist told me this thing is she, she handed me this big, huge, uh, <laughs> poster board and drew yep. this egg on it and it had a bunch of cracks. And she says, each crack I want you to, um, I want you to draw and I'm trying to access a part of your brain that you're going to need. So you yeah. have to draw to access that brain. I don't care if it's a stick figure or if you're a good, draw, draw your yeah. traumas. Start wow. from the youngest one you can possibly have and go all the way up to now wow. and draw it. And I started, I was like, this is dumb. Like, <laughs> I hate this. This is psycho babble. I hate this crap. Like, the next thing you know, I'm going to be having my fingers upside down and doing some weird stuff. So I'm like, whatever. <laughs> you know, so I started drawing it. I will, the memories that started to explode in my oh. brain that I totally yes. forgot about. I had to call my dad. Like that, <laughs> please tell me that did this happen? He's like, yeah. I'm like, 
what? I didn't remember that. And he's like, what do you mean? I said, I- I'm just starting to remember these things. But yeah. what happened was, is it started to shape me. Like you said, the, it's not my fault. Like yep. I did really well in baseball because I was brought up in an anxious environment. I was traveling right. all the time for military. My dad was gone. He was a bombardier for B-52. He would leave and couldn't tell me where he was going for like right. two weeks. And we're Jeez. in Guam. We're, we're close to all the Cold War stuff. Like it wasn't like we were in Kansas and my dad went somewhere. <laughs> like we're right in the middle totally. of like the, You're in the, the line crap fire. going down, you know? Yeah. And he'd leave for two weeks and I'd never hear from him. Wow. And I'd be one of my dad's coming back. And 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 it was just crazy. And then and then I I mean just I I was killed almost like eight different times in my like I said, a hammerhead came over a reef. Yeah. Metal fear of sharks almost got me. I almost drowned. I got sucked out to sea one time and no one could get me. My uh, surfer had to swim out and grab me. My dad couldn't I was underwater drowning. Wow. Uh, I've been hit uh man, I've been hit head on at fifty five miles an hour um and lived walked away from it i've been hit twice uh i've been i mean there's so many i'm i'm drawing all these traumas like <laughs> bro crazy you need stuff. two eggs <laughs> yeah, exactly i'm asking for another poster board <laughs> like i need another one you know and i'm like drawing all these traumas and my my therapist looked at me and she's like i've done a lot of therapy and this is really intense yeah. and she's yeah. like you know why you're good at being functioning in, in anxiety because you were raised in it because you've not, not known anything else. Yeah, that's in fact, if I don't have anxious moments, I would create yeah. them. Yeah. I would literally create them. And I didn't even know it. Like yeah. now I'm like, I don't want now that I've been actually healing from it, I want zero to do with anxiety. Yeah. Like, like there's that's some true. things that I thrive in, right? The anxiety yeah. of a hunt. Like, yep. I mean, you've you've been in it. You, you you do the same thing, dude. Like yep. going out there in Alaska, yeah, chance of dying. It, Something happens to you. It's man. necessary. Like, it's necessary. Like yeah. way different. And and so she was like, man, when you pitched, the reason why you didn't do good as a starter, she actually looked me up. It was hilarious. And this woman, don't get me wrong, she's crazy. She's because she's like a a master diver. She's a skydiver. She's a pilot. Wow. This woman does everything. Like oh, she's wow. just like, and I just go do That's stuff. That's a good therapist. Yeah, it's crazy, right? She was also a PK. So she's like, I got trauma for being a PK, right? So <laughs> like like so we were we were sitting there talking and she was like, I looked you up baseball wise just to kind of follow your career. And she's like, you know why you sucked as a starter? I was like, Thank you. <laughs> you know, like, I was like, appreciate that. She's like, because you didn't have pressure. Like yeah. it's zero zero in the first. You had nine yeah. innings. Like you you didn't feel the sense of urgency in wow. the first inning but when you came in as a reliever and the back was against the wall and you oh, had you got no choice focus. yeah your anxiety went up you calmed down and you excelled she was that you were built for that jeremy wow. it's, it's kind of how god shaped you in a way but understand that it has also caused trauma in relationships it's caused you know you, you, yeah. you know dysfunction and she said so we're going to work on those things and now it's why and she looked at me and says jeremy you had you're going through a divorce when you don't believe in divorce 22 year old marriage has died it's over jeremy she had to look at me and she goes it's over and it's yeah. okay and she's a yeah. christian she's a christian yeah. therapist. she goes jeremy it's okay you're gonna be fine yeah and you're gonna be healthier because your anxiety it's too much and she's yeah. like you were not functioning well in it. Your relationship was not functioning well. Two people got to want to be in the marriage. She doesn't want to be in the marriage. It's, it's over. And you know what? You're going to be fine. And yeah. we're going to take this on. But this is the worst storm of your life, Jeremy. And you were built for it. You can handle it. You can deal with it. And man, I did. I literally yeah. said, man, I took on so many storms, so much chaos, but what you I did. utilized in baseball is dealing with the uncontrollable and the controllable. The uncontrollable right. was I'm getting divorced. That's not the controllable. The controllable is right. how do I handle myself spiritually, mentally, right. physically? I got in the best physical shape of my life. I was wow. boxing. I was mountain biking. I was lifting. I, I got emotionally strong. The, 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 I, I found someone that I've been dating for over a year. We're celibate. We do not have oh. sex. Like, and I Come promised on. my sons that I will not have sex until I get married. And I promised yes. her that 
regardless of how this works out, I, I, I love you. And yeah, marriage is in our future, hopefully. Yeah. But we're not having sex before that. And she's on board. And it's like all those things. Come on. And that's man. a storm in and of itself, Jay. I'm 42 on, years old. Bro. Like, <laughs> so it's yeah. not easy. You know, I'm no. not going to sugarcoat that. But no. the reality of it is, is like I've got to be selfless for other people. And I feel so much better because I'm able to weather storms, deal with them, and know now beyond a shadow of a doubt. I get what it means by taking joy in trials and tribulations. I get yeah. Jacob one. I get what it means to be like, yeah. hey, if you're going to live with Christ, you got to die with him. I'm yeah. starting to actually grasp that mentality. I love and it, it's dude. super fulfilling in the most that, weird see, way, but it's fulfilling. Then that's the thing, right? That's the thing about it is responsibility gives us purpose. And when you take all that ownership of your life and then you start pressing into it, you have things every day to be proud of. It, you have, and, and you feel like this guy that's or on a real path, on a real journey, and you're no longer afraid and running from stuff. Like, how do you feel proud of yourself when, when you live a passive life and, and you mm. run away from everything? You know, so, so many men are in that boat, right? They got all these storms coming up and they're, we're, how long am I going to be in here and, and pushing away? And, and without taking that responsibility and without being proud of yourself and doing things like, Dude, you could easily justify sleeping with your girlfriend or easily justify yeah. getting married really quick. And, but bro, you wouldn't be proud of yourself mm -hmm. and your boys deep down wouldn't be proud of you. But now you have this incredible story, right? Doesn't matter how it ends. Like you've already won. You have this right. incredible story of you've already decided the outcome mm -hmm. is for your boys and for her and for you, respect and honor. You're showing them a good example. You're leading by example. And man, that's a life that you, you can only be proud of. So that's incredible, bro. Yeah. Thank again, you. <clears throat> which again is why we're talking is it's, yeah. you're an inspiration and you're, you're one of those guys that I love to have on because it takes the excuses away from, it takes our, and I need that. I need men in my life to take my excuses away. Right. I need, I need those stories of, Oh, yeah, you have it hard, but not as hard as I do. Yeah. And, and it's not a competition <laughs> yeah. and you're going to go through, you know, so yeah. you're taking excuses away from everyone else and letting us know what's possible, which is freaking awesome. Let's yeah. talk a little bit about your brewery. Yeah. I'm, I'm super stoked on that. Um, yeah. Tell me a little bit about, you know, why you started it and where it's at and are you guys yeah. open, all that stuff. Yeah. So it was a cool story. I was actually, it actually was birthed in, uh, well, I've always kind of, you know, when I was in San Francisco, I did a, a fundraisers at this place called 21st amendment phenomenal yeah. brewery, top 20 mm -hmm. in the country. And, and I got to know some great people there because of the fundraisers. I got to understand beer and it, it you know, a lot of, a lot of misconceptions, you know, even I yeah. talked to my family about it. You know, my mom is big time anti-alcohol person. Uh, she raised yeah. her dad was kind of had some alcohol issues, so she didn't yeah. like it sister yeah. and her husband, their pastor, are pretty conservative. Uh, so they're not big into it. And I finally had to just look at them and say, you realize breweries is not about a bunch of drunks. That is not what it is about. It is far from it. It is not a yeah. bar. It's a brewery. There's two different yeah. things. I'm not saying people don't take sure. it too far from time to time, but that's not what they're about. And I started learning a lot and it was so much about community. It was mm. so much about bonding. It was so much about um, people getting together and sharing their hearts and enjoying breaking of bread and so drinking cool. beer. Like it was for me, it's a lot like the last, I mean, it's drinking wine and breaking bread and, and, and yeah. talking life. Like, that's like, so, so, cool. so I got that and I was sitting there and that's why I fell in love with it. Uh, but I was in um, Sacramento and right in the middle of this storm and I was telling nobody about it. I didn't know. I didn't want to tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was still speaking and traveling, which was very difficult for me. I had a lot of yeah. panic attacks on the plane. I actually had to, I hate pharmaceuticals, do not like them, but I actually had to take Xanax. If not, yeah. I was going to die. Like, right, for sure. it was really hard for me. And, yeah. and so for me, it was, um, I, I, I was trying to deal with it and I fly in, I got to speak at this, uh, uh, rolling, rolling Hills, a big church in Sacramento. It's like a mega church mm -hmm. it's the 
close to the Jesus culture boys, like all those people down there. Right. Yeah. And, and this pastor brings me in and they had a split kind of thing going on. So he's trying to rebuild it. He's coming from uh, Atlanta, young guy. And he's like, Hey, I know you're going to speak at my church, but I'd like you to, um, would you mind doing a men's thing for me? I'm like, dude, you brought me in for the weekend. If you want me to have a 2 a.m. men's <laughs> breakfast, I mean, that's what I'm here for. Like, yeah, it's part of the game. Do it. And so he's like, all right. He's like, he goes, I just, I got, it's just, I, I got to tell you, like, it's not at our church. And I'm like, okay. He's like, I just can't get men to come. And I'm like, well, where at your church? You have it. He goes, well, I have it in the, the classrooms. I'm like, no man after work wants to go into a classroom, bro. I'm gonna be honest <laughs> with you. I'm like, I would not go either. He's like, yeah, yeah I know. That's why I'm kind of, I just don't want to offend you, but I, I'm putting it at a brewery. And I laughed at him. I was like, you obviously don't know me. <laughs> so I was like, I'm perfectly, I'm perfectly fine speaking at a brewery. He's like, okay, you know, I just didn't know. I'm, I'm kind of nervous. You know, I, it's kind of out there a little bit. The church isn't uh, pretty, it's pretty conservative. So I'm, I'm wondering if anybody's going to show up. And we pull up to this brewery and there's like 250 men. Wow. That are sitting, and his eyes get big and he's like, I didn't even know this many men went to my, like, this is ridiculous. I'm like, <laughs> and I would say, and I looked at him and I was like, you know, I'd like to say it's because I was a giant. That yeah, that's why I they showed say. Up. But I think there is some of that, but I think it has a lot to do with the fact that there's a really cool, comfortable setting to come hear someone talk. Yeah, bro. And you grab a beer like, and you can yeah, hear just, someone talk. And there's freedom in the sense of like the pastor said, we can actually have a beer. You know, yeah. like we don't have to hide our Coors Light in our back fridge in our garage. <laughs> you know, like we actually can like go have yeah. one. You know, and so I'm like, so I get in there, I grab a beer. It's called Jack. It's called uh, Jack Russell Brewery. It's up yeah. high up in that mountain area, of awesome. Sacramento, where it starts to get cold. And so uh, we get in there, and I, I go on stage, and everybody's, and I light my cigar, and I'm like, right. and you see guys like eyes light up, and they look around, and I'm like, I, I kind of just kind of. You know, BS with them a little bit and talk around and then just kind of, hey, because all of a sudden they started leaving and everybody was running the rigs, coming back with cigarettes and cigars. <laughs> like, it was awesome. Like, I started laughing. I was, he's like, if he can have a cigar, we're having them. <laughs> so I like this cigar and I got this beer in my hand and I just talk about what we're talking about. Yeah. Talk about the Buffalo mentality, weather and storms, yeah, what yeah. it's like to be a man, what it's like to show vulnerability, to actually cry in front of your come children on. because it's healthy. Bro. Not because it's weak, it's healthy. Yeah. yeah. And 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 love on your boys. I, I mean, I had boys, but love on your children, your boys, your daughters. Cry yeah. in front of them when there's a reason to cry. Mm-hmm. Like, like it, it, you know, there's a safe time to cry and there's an unsafe time to cry, right? So, right. you know, like when it's safe and, and show that and yeah. show your family that emotion is okay. Yeah. And and I got that point. And man, by the time I was done, men were crying. Uh, yeah. There is people showing up. There are people that show up at a brewery, obviously, because you don't shut those down. And yeah. this woman came up. To me. It's a men's only event. And it, a woman comes up to me and, and they were like, she was like, hey, I had, I we had no idea you were even going to be here. We're Giants fans. But all of a sudden we look up, we're like, oh my gosh, it's it's Jeremy. And my husband and I were, we're about done. We came as a date night because we were like, Wow, is something because we're over. We 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 have to do something to revive wow. our marriage. So wow. we just were like trying to try date night at a brewery. I, my husband loves beer. I'm like, I'll take him to a brewery. Anything she goes, and he heard you speak and he wept. Wow, blessed me big time, man. Like I was like, dude. She's like, we don't go to this church. We don't know anything that's going on. And in my mind, I was like, if nobody got it but that guy, I'm good. Like Done. I'm good and done. And I drove down the hill and I felt like God say, this is what I want you to do. And I'm wow. like, man, a brewery. I said, God, I'm about to go through a divorce. I'm about to lose 50% <laughs> of my money. You kidding me? I don't have time to do that. How am I going to invest in a brewery? You know, like I'm like, yeah. you know, and, and I was like, well, I'm going to know for sure. I, I, I drove down, I hit San Francisco because I had to work for the team for a little bit. I met the, one of the, one of the general managers of 21st amendment, was at the game and I said, Hey, uh, where are you at? He said, I'm at the game. I'm like, Hey, meet me across the street. I'm staying at, uh, at, uh, uh, the hotel via right across the street. They have a rooftop bar. Meet me up there for a drink. I got to talk to you about something. So he meets me up there and I said, this is what I want to do. And I told him, I said, I want to start a brewery in Bernie. And he looked at me, he goes, 
I'm in. I'm like, wow. Well, yeah. He's like, listen, uh, let me tie some loose ends here, but I, I kind of feel like I'm ready to kind of venture into something like that. He goes, Jeremy, I was raised. I grew up in El Paso, raised in El Paso, Texas. I know Texas. I came out here to run breweries. I know the business. I've been in it for 20 years. Like, wow. I'll be happy to let, let's try it, man. Let's, let's, let's do something. But he goes, but I'm not leaving without Jaron. And Jaron is one of the main brewers for 21st. And I'm like, you're not getting that guy. He won the silver for his lager. Like, they're not letting wow. him. Get and he was like, all right, just give me some time. So he calls me one day about two months later. And he's like, hey, I think I got Jaron to get on board. And I didn't poach from 20. Let's just put this out there. I didn't poach those guys. I, I was very respectful. And I said, listen, I, I love 21st Amendment. I still do. I, I, I want to be very respectful. So make sure this is done right, because I don't yeah. want to be known as that guy. And they said, no, we, we've talked to him and they understand. And, and Jaron is actually kind of was thinking about coming out that way towards Austin. And I'm like, well, I'm 70 miles south. And he was like, I think, he, and he bought it. And he said, but Jaron wants you to call him himself. So I called him, talked to him about my vision. It's a give back brewery. That's what we did. That's how we met through give back. So we give, give back to the community. Each, each, each beer will end up going to a cause and awesome. they were in and i felt it was such a um struggleless yeah. scenario that i'm like i'm pretty sure god just kicked the door open and said <laughs> it's kind of obvious dude don't 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 throw don't don't say my lifeline didn't come when you say you're drowning when i threw right. you can bro you, know, you built all this <laughs> yeah you built all this through covid yeah and i did i i literally dude. in covid they moved out here, moved their families out here, found a place. COVID was full on, oh. took a risk. Everybody's like, are you, sh-? my, my own divorce attorney was like, are you out of your mind? And I'm like, possibly, yeah. but <laughs> you know, I, I, he knows I was a man of faith and he was like, dude, you're stupid, but if you want to do it, we'll figure out a way to make sure the judge helps give you some money to be able to do it. Cause you know, everything gets locked down in the divorce. Yeah. Process. So, uh, we, 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 we negotiated that. I, I put money into it and it is beautiful. It's an 1897 livery barn. I found a wow. well in the middle of this brewery that no one even knew existed. No way. And he was jackhammering through a floor. His jackhammer fell through the floor. It's a 36 foot well from the 1800s. They used to feed the horses and the city knew nothing about it. Oh my God. I made a pub table out of it with a glass top. So you can see down it. <laughs> like I've got original two by eights wow. from the 1800s in the ceiling exposed. I've got wow. a Buffalo mural. That's probably 16 feet long by 12 feet tall. And it's charging storms. The Buffalo is literally oh, charging legit. Storms. beautiful. And the beer is phenomenal. Uh, we opened up probably about five weeks ago. Yeah. I've, we've already went through beer once. I got back from spring break with my boys and my brewer goes, we have good news and bad news. I said, just hit me with the bad news. I'm better with that. And he's like, <laughs> we ran out of heels. We ran out of beer. I'm like, hmm, what's the good news? We ran out of beer. <laughs> That's a good point, but we still have to fix the issue. So let's start making some more beer. But it was a crazy thing. The city has been so amazing. I'll have two, wow. 300 people in the beer garden and there are people that are hanging out. My buddies, I got my pastors coming. I got yeah. people from oh, That's so cool. Families are my kid friendly, cornhole, dog friendly. People are connecting. I'm wow. running a men's Bible study on Monday mornings on, out of man. there. I, I do. I'm, I'm, I'm about ready to launch to churches. Um, now that I've got my bearings under me a little bit on a day a month, I'll do one time a month for a church. They can wow. get the beer garden shut down. I'll do a men's night with them. Like wow. it's so awesome. And it's so God breathed, you know, like it man, feels so it. good and it, we're doing well. And, and there's been tons of articles on us and it's not, the baseball player plays a little bit into it that they're, I'm not denying that, but Bro, I should. What, what we stand for as a community, like the mayor has put my GM on the stinking committee for like, uh, uh, events <laughs> like, like wow, we're man. already in the city of like with not the politics, I wouldn't say, but kind of, you know, just trying to help mold this city and, and, and for the good for all about community, because now that we're out of COVID people are craving. Yeah connection yep. man they are and it is so good it's so awesome man, 
I love that. And gosh, congrats on, on yeah. starting all that and in charging it. People don't understand <clears throat> how hard it is to not only start a business, but a business in the middle of COVID, a business in the middle of COVID coming out of divorce, being yeah. a single dad, like start like in doing it well, gosh, dude, freaking yeah. good job. And my GM's great, Brandon, and they all know it. They, they know my story. They know exactly what I'm dealing with. Yeah. And they know that, hey, I can be, we're open seven days a week, 11 a.m. to midnight. And I'm there from nine to two on, because I got my children. I got to pick my boys up from school. Like, so like cool, I, when I don't have my boys when they're at their mothers, I'm like, okay, I'm here. But then I'm kind of gassed from having my kids <laughs> yeah. for five days. So, I mean, he makes fun of me. He said, man, you should have seen it here at 10 o'clock when you rolled over to your left side in bed. It actually got kind of good fun in here. Like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, dude, I'm in bed by nine. Like, I've got no reason to be up. But I'll have some times where we'll I'll stay, well, I'll come over here and I'll be like, you know what? I'll roll into the beer garden. It's going pretty good. I don't have my kids. I'm going to. I'm going to sit out back and I'll light a cigar by the, by the fire pit back there yeah. and talk with people and have a good time and, and, and be a part of a community. And it's so much fun. I mean, we do trivia Tuesdays. I mean, yeah. we just do different, have different ways to have influence. And in the end for some of these, yeah, for my, for, for most of my staff here, it's making money. It's taking care of their families. Yeah. I, you know, I, good for them. For me, it's not as much about that. For me, it's yeah. like, I get to, I, I get to bring the aroma of Christ in a way that I was always dreaming of, but Jay, I yeah. don't know if I would have done it unless I had to weather that storm. I don't know if I would have done yeah. it. I was so That's preoccupied so cool. with, with, with trying to figure out a marriage that, that, that even at the time of, of everything going down, it was still a struggle. I mean, we were, st- we were dealing with that 22 years of just frustration and, and, and trying to yeah. break kids and, and I don't know if I would have done it. And, and for me, I'm not saying that, that I'm, I'm definitely not saying God's not for divorce either. He, he yep. didn't want that to happen, but I think he truly took what was meant for evil and made it good, you know? And, uh, that's, that's how, truly how I live in this situation. Well, man, your, your whole life is an example of that from start to, to where you're at today. And yeah, again, I think it's, it's so exciting to me. Um, to have a friend that's modeling that. And then to, to be able to give that to other men who, no matter where you're at in your life, if you're, if you're starting a business, if you're raising kids, if you're going through a hard time, you know, guys can get a clear picture from you of, of the path to take, which is dive into community. Uh, Don't run from the storm, go straight for it. Um, Be vulnerable, be honest, cry if you got to, but don't give up and good things happen, you know, holding out and living, living life the way it's supposed to be lived with conviction. And, uh, you know, it is, it always pays off. It always pays off in the end that the tough road is also the funnest road. Mm. And, um, you're such a, a picture of that, man. So listen, we're gonna, we're gonna wrap this up, but, um, I just, where's your brewery at? Is it in Bernie? Is that what you said? In Bernie, Texas, about 12 miles North of San Antonio and I 10. Yep. Yeah. So if you're in Texas, if you're flying into Texas, if you're anywhere around there, uh, go grab a beer, um, hang out with Jeremy, <clears throat> play some trivia yeah. you can go. What, what nights do you do the, uh, the Bible? Oh, mornings. It's uh, Monday morning, Monday mornings. Yep. We do a men's Monday thing, morning, uh, eight o'clock Bible study, go get, get in the word, grab a beer, hang out with some guys and, uh, get a little bit sharper at, uh, at, at free Rome. So, Dude, congrats on that. Jeremy, thanks so much Thank for you. coming on here and, and just sharing your story with us and, and taking us through a little bit of, of your life and giving us some some tips and tools to become better men. That's yeah. what we're here to do. So, Thank you for having uh, me on, man. I really appreciate I, it. Yeah, I appreciate you too. Um, have an incredible week. Thank you, man. Hey guys, thanks so much for listening to the Brave Co. Podcast. If you like this podcast, would you please rate it, review it, leave us a great comment. And if you like this episode in particular, share it with your friends and family. That helps us to spread the word. Guys, stay brave. We'll see you next week.